working out in space. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Paul Francis, founder and CEO of OYO Fitness. Welcome, Paul. Great to be here with you, Tanya. Tell us about OYO Fitness and why you started the company. Yeah, I originally uh, had been an inventor for many years, and uh, I was interested in, in uh, personal fitness. And uh, I started inventing uh, portable fitness equipment. And then I saw an article about uh, uh, NASA's uh, astronauts coming back from space and losing a lot of bone and muscle mass. And they were looking for a countermeasure. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I should contact NASA. They might be interested in this. And uh, to make a long story short, I was able to get into NASA and uh, show them some prototypes. And they called me back the next day and said, can you come back and make a major presentation to our people? And at the end of that presentation, they said, we think we need to fly this. And uh, they were building the International Space Station at the time, and they needed to have a uh, resistive exercise device on the space station in order to counteract the bone muscle loss from zero gravity. So uh, it was kind of like a mission critical uh, uh, program, and we worked night and day and got our equipment up there with the first crew with uh, Bill Shepard, uh, who was the commander of the first crew, and the two Russian cosmonauts that basically turned the lights on the space station in, in uh, 2000. And for the next 10 years, they used my equipment uh, every day for about an hour to uh, maintain their bone and muscle mass. And the reason they picked my Spireflex technology was that it duplicated the benefits of free weights. And they actually did a study and found that the free weight group and the uh, Spireflex group both built the same amount of muscle during the, uh, uh, during the program. So yeah, we were up there for 10 years. And uh, then uh, after we uh, got the NASA project uh, going, I started re visiting some fitness equipment companies. And uh, I ended up licensing the technology to a novice Bowflex. And we launched the Bowflex Revolution Home Gym. And that became the highest selling, most popular home gym uh, in history. And uh, then, um, oh, about five years ago, I started uh, OYO Fitness, uh, On Your Own Fitness, OYO, in order to miniaturize the technology and provide a uh, portable fitness solution so you could get the same benefits as uh, free weights wh wherever you are, whether you're at home, office, or traveling. And so we launched the uh, OYO Personal Gym, and it was the second highest funded uh, Kickstarter project in history. And now we've just come out with a new new version, excuse me, uh, it's called the Nova Gym. And we've taken the original device and added additional flex packs to provide up to 40 pounds of resistance and added these T handles and just made it a little more heavy duty. And so this is the uh, OYO Nova Gym. And we launched this on uh, Kickstarter uh, last month. And we're up to over $4 million in pre-orders at Kickstarter which is the highest uh, funded uh, Kickstarter fitness product, product in history. And out of like 400 or 500,000 projects on Kickstarter, we're in the top 40 in history. So uh, people, you know, might be because of the pandemic, uh, people are looking for home fitness solutions. And with our background and the great reviews we have, uh, people are uh, pre-ordering this uh, in the tens of thousands. And we're really excited about getting into production and uh, adding the Nova Gym to our product line uh, uh, here in the, in the coming months. Well, congratulations on that. That is um, a Thank pretty you. nominal feat. Tell us more about NASA. How did, how did you make the connection and get them interested? Did you ha have a prototype for them? Yeah, well, it turned, I was kind of goofing off uh, and, and there was a, uh, a coffee shop. There is a coffee shop below my office. And I was down there reading the newspaper. This tells you how long ago it was. It was like 1997. And there was an article about Shannon Lucid coming back from uh, the near space station. And they had a, basically a carrier off in a stretcher. And uh, they said, you know, we got to find a solution. And uh, they quoted uh, the chief medical director, Roger Billica. So I was able to get his number at uh, Johnson Space Center and call him up. And he said, oh, you're sure, yeah, if you're gonna be around Houston, drop, you know, drop by. Said, oh, I think I'm gonna, yeah, I've got a meeting down, you know, so of course I got down there within like a week 
and they had me in this, in this little room and some engineers came in and they pulled on my prototype and then they called the next day and said, you know, we'd like to give uh, you to give us a full on you know, presentation. So I showed up with two carousel uh, trays full of, you know, 80 slides each. And I was in the NASA, you know, uh, administration building number one in the big conference room with you know, 60, 70 people in there. And, you know, tsh -tsh -tsh -tsh. and at the end of it, uh, we went into a little meeting room and they said, look, we, we think we want to fly this. We think this is the solution we need uh, in order to maintain our bone and muscle uh, in long-term, you know, zero gravity uh, environments because we have to uh, be able to bring our people back and uh, have them be as healthy as they were when they left. And we wanna to go to Mars, which has gravity, and it's gonna take a year and a half to get there. So we need to have a countermeasure. So, you know, you've got the, uh, you know, muscularity and, and bone structure and, and uh, uh, to enable you to survive on Mars when you land. So uh, it was a very exciting project. and. Uh, we, we got one of these passes that we could get into any building at Johnson Space Center. So we went around and visited everything and played with a lot of their toys and uh, got on the shuttle simulator. And then we even were trained to go up in the Vomit Comet, the KC-135, to test the uh, uh, unit in, in uh, zero gravity. And uh, I never actually got to fly on there, but the training was fun. We got in the hyperbaric chamber where they suck all the air out and you're taking a test and when you feel like you're going to pass out you're supposed to put your oxygen mask on and turn the oxygen on and uh, so we had uh, it was a lot of fun and, and uh, very inter interesting to actually you know uh, see Johnson Space Center uh, up close uh, growing up you know I, I was I'm old enough to have seen you know John Glenn you know launch uh, uh, from Cape uh, Cape Canaveral back in the early 60s and uh, so uh, I've always you know admired what NASA has done for the, uh, you know, world, world progress. You mentioned this, your consumer product had an interesting evolution. Tell us about the design challenges that you had making this robust enough for consumer use and how, how did you overcome them? Yeah, the, uh, I originally started with a design that used steel springs, steel power springs. And uh, they gave me the, uh, the rotational resistance I needed, and the packaging I needed, but they started breaking at 10,000 cycles. And we needed, you know, hundreds of thousands of cycles. So I looked at some elastomer compounds and I went out and designed this elastomer spiral. And we tested a bunch of different designs and then uh, ended up, you know, patenting the one that really was the best. And, uh, started life cycle in that and we were getting millions of cycles and uh what w really worried me is when when nasa off gassed it uh to make sure it was you know safe to have in space and i thought it might you know put out different you know, gases and chemicals but it passed the off gassing and once it did that i knew that we were good to go because the rest of the machine was aluminum and you know uh you know cables and things and uh so you know we would develop a prototype, we get into Johnson Space Center, they test it, we bring it back, make modifications, so it was back and forth, back and forth. And uh, it had to sustain um, under 50 degrees below zero because they thought the Russians might put it on a train through Siberia to get to their launch facility. And there's a chance it could be launched, you know, from Russia. So uh, there was all kinds of, you know, vibration tests and, you know, uh, that we had to do uh, but, uh, but yeah, we uh, kept working at it and solved all the problems and were able to deliver a machine that would produce up to 300 pounds of resistance because you need that much to do squats in space since your body weighs zero. So if you want to do, uh, you know, a hundred pound squat on earth, you put a hundred pounds on your back and do the squat on. up in space. You need, if you weigh 200 pounds, you need 300 pounds on your shoulders to do a you know, hundred pound squat. So that was the whole key was to load the, uh, the uh, spine and the hips and, and the legs because that's where they lost most of their um, bone mass because you're just floating. And that's why you see, you know, these uh, uh, science fiction movies, all the aliens are really thin and, and skinny and have no bone structure because they're living in, you know, microgravity their entire lives. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was very uh, interesting. 
project. Certainly you had a lot of requirements. I mean, it sounds like you had a lot of challenges. What lessons did you learn bringing this product to market and, and what advice could you pass along to others who are considering the same thing? Yeah, I mean, the main thing is you've got to develop something that people uh, you know, will actually pay for. And uh, there's a lot of good ideas out there, but whenever I would start to develop an idea, it had to, you know, some, something that would be patentable that I could protect, something that could be manufactured at a reasonable cost, uh, and wouldn't have the perceived value, you know, of the, of the retail price. And uh, obviously something that would, uh, would work and uh, last and be of value. And uh, so, yeah, we made a lot of mistakes and spent a lot of money going down the wrong, you know, pathways. And, uh, but we were able to hang in there. And uh, there's a Chinese saying that, you know, you fall down seven times, you get up eight. And that's, you know, in any, you know, uh, program where you're trying to create something brand new, uh, that's gonna happen. And uh, so, uh, Obviously, you know, being in the right place at the right time with the right, you know, solution helps too, which is what happened with NASA. And then, of course, with uh, Nautilus Bowflex, uh, their uh, power rod uh, Bowflex uh, home gym was going off patents. And they were doing like, you know, $600 million a year in sales on that product. And uh, so we got in there right about that time and said, hey, here's even a better solution. And uh, so we developed the Bowflex Revolution, and uh, you know, we did a you know, a couple hundred million dollars in sales the first you know few years, uh, and uh, and it's still going strong. And uh, so, uh, and now with the OEO Personal Gym and the Nova Gym, uh, it's surprising how you know people are responding to it. Uh, people that don't want to use cumbersome free weights want the portability, may have even some physical issues. Uh, and you don't need the verticality of, uh, of, of, of gravity. Uh, so you don't need benches or other equipment because it creates its own resistance. So uh, really in any plane of movement, uh, you can use the uh, OYO gym and the Nova gym uh, for upper body, core, legs, uh, total body uh, uh, resistance training. And what a perfect time for people who are uh, maybe closed out of their gyms and they need to turn not, not only their home into their office, but their home into their gym. Paul Francis, founder and CEO of OYO Fitness. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to get uh, some of this equipment for themselves, how can they do that? Yeah, they could go to our uh, website, uh, oyofitness.com. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, you know, OYO Fitness uh, Facebook and uh Got a bunch of videos up on our uh, YouTube channel, the uh, OYO Fitness uh, YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, just search for us online. You'll see lots of ways to connect with us. Sounds good. Thanks again for joining us, Paul, and telling your story. All right, Tonya. Take care now. Of course. And find more of my interviews right here or at TonyaHall.net. Thanks for watching.